What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. We're mixing a little bit of wrestling with finance in this audio clip because of the big news that came out with all of these releases from WWE. And the reason given is budgetary reasons. And the scoffing that comes from out of the pro wrestling community every time we've heard this over the last year or so. But... As the guy in the wrestling community that not only does wrestling YouTube videos, but also does personal finance videos, I thought I might want to talk about this a little bit, whether or not WWE really does have some money issues. And is there a real reason, and is that the real reason, that some of these wrestlers and staff are being released? But before we get into that, I want to remind you guys, of course, because we're going to be talking about finances here, you can get your finances straight. I got tons of free stuff down in the description box for you. You can get up to two free stocks from Webull. They could be worth it. Well, now they've just upped it now, so they could be worth anything. You can get free crypto from Webull by just signing up. Uh, and they even have a program now where you don't even really need a minimum uh, deposit. So check out that from Webull. You can also check out Coinbase, BlockFi, or Celsius. BlockFi and Celsius give you very high percentages in uh, interest on any cryptocurrency you have. And obviously the big Shiba Inu craze is that's going around right now. You can do that on Coinbase and get some free crypto by using the links down below. So check that out down below. And now let's get into the story. Now, as always, anytime somebody loses their job, it's always a bad thing. And especially a lot of these people, their dream was to work in WWE, to be at WrestleMania and yada, 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 and all that stuff. Um, it does go with the trend I've been talking about and me and other YouTubers have been talking about over the past couple of years that hopefully the trend will be going away from WWE being the end all and be all for everybody. And maybe th in the long run, maybe this is a good thing, but in the short term, this sucks. So... There's a post going around. Now, keep in mind, WWE hasn't officially confirmed any of these things as of the time I'm recording this. They may later today. Uh, but we're going to go through the list of people who were released as far as this list I got this list I got from the New York Post. So, included in this list are Ember Moon, Keith Lee, Keith Lee. Dude nearly died of COVID, came back, you messed up his character, and now you released him. Rumored. Karrion Cross. We don't even need to talk about that, man. That that that's been a thing of conjecture for like the last couple months. How man how man they messed up Karrion Cross. Mia Yim, really? You let loose Mia Rim. Now Graham and Alik and some of the luchadors, I there's been rumors that a lot of those guys have wanted to get out of WWE anyway, so maybe they were just granted their release. Nia Jax. Big girl is gone. I guess there won't be any more uh Hard ring work. You know, maybe Charlotte Flair's got a little bit more pull than we thought. I don't know. Lince Dorado again. Uh, Jeet Rama. Katrina Cortez. Trey Baxter. Zaida Ramier. Some of these people I don't know because I don't watch NXT uh, anymore. Jesse Camara. Uh, B -Fab. Now, B-Fab, that's a real interesting one because B-Fab has star written all. Anyway, I'm not, Oni Lorcan, not too much of a surprise. Frankie Monet. Uh, Eva Marie, who just got <laughs> poor Eva Marie <laughs> and Scarlett Bardo. Yeah, um, this is uh, you never like seeing people get released. You just never like seeing it. But now let's get into I, I wanted to talk about the financial side of it, because there's a lot of and I've seen a lot of YouTubers and a lot of people tweeting a lot of podcasts. I took a poll a couple months ago whether people believe that WWE had a budget problem. And that's the reason they keep giving for all of this. Well, a lot of people say no, and all oh, that's BS, and they post record profits, and they just had a quarter three earnings, and they have they have all these profits, and they profits and profits. I don't think a lot of people actually, however, know how to read business reports. Because as a person who is an investor and has been knee deep into the investing world for a while, I started looking and digging a little bit further into the stuff out here outside of the headline of how what their profits were, because I think that's what everybody looks at. But if you look down here, and I'm going to put it up on the screen if I can. As of September 30th, 2021, WWE held approximately $449 million in cash and short-term investments. Debt totaled $221 million in debt, including $200 million associated with WWE's convertible, uh, convertible notes. 
The company has no outstanding, uh, no amounts outstanding under its revolving line of credit and estimates relate debt capacity of approximately $200 million. So while they don't have, it, that's kind of massaging the numbers there. The real truth about it though, is if even you just look up WWE debt ratio, and I've been keeping an eye on this for a while because some of you know I was gifted WWE stock a long time ago, so I do keep an eye on it. But WWE has a high debt to earning ratio and it's over 60%. And now to explain what that means, typically with a company, a high debt to earnings ratio is a bit of a concern because you're worried about whether or not the company can pay off its debts. And particularly if interest rates go up. Now you, some of you might know where I'm going with this because currently right now, one of the big concerns in the United States is that interest rates are about to rise. However, that all being said, and I'll show you a couple of uh, analysis, uh, business analysis on WWE that goes beyond, oh, they made this much money. Uh, the, the company has a lot of liabilities, but they seem to be uh, nested in their assets, which essentially means that they've got more liabilities than they have assets, but they have a lot of cash on hand. And that's what Nick Khan was talking about in the press release, where he was talking about they have some... So fluidity there. So they get the, the highest it could be, it could be like $200 million and they could pay that off of cash. Cause you can't pay off debt with, um, promises. You have to actually have cash. Uh, so they have $223 million o- on hand and that cash that they can handle their debt. But I think they wanted to go down a little bit more. Now there've been some positive moves with WWE. Um, they're, do they seem to be in, in danger of not being able to repay their debt? No, it doesn't seem so right now. But again, it is a high ratio. And depending on what interest rates do, they could wind up pay, having to pay a lot more money in debt, which might tilt them out of balance a little bit. But the likelihood of that is low. But I think that's why WWE may be doing, it may be citing as budget cuts because they're not quite sure how much how much they're going to have to pay back on the debt that they currently hold. So if the debt, if the debt goes, I mean, at that kind of level, like a a percentage change when you're borrowing that much money, that's a lot. (laughs) That that, that could be a significant, you're talking about millions, tens of millions of dollars in changes. And that could, and that could be an effect. They may be hedging against the fact that they think that their interest rates are going to go up. We need to, well, if they go up, we're going to add $30 million, blah, 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 blah. Let's cut these people and then we can, uh, you not have to pay that $30 million if interest rates go up, which interest rates are going to go up. But as far as WWE, it is, there's a di- big difference between WWE going out of business and WWE uh, being a functioning, profitable company. And while they are a profitable company, again, there's a lot of debt. Um, some other people have claimed that, and this is a wild, <laughs> this is a wild speculation that WWE might actually be doing all of this intentionally to bankrupt AEW because they want AEW to pick up all these big contracts and go out of business. I don't really think that's uh, Tony Khan's way too smart for that. So I don't think that's happening, but uh, there are things, there are things that are in the works. WWE is a very hard company to kind of nail down as whether or not it's a good investment. Um, Even on simply wallet, uh, simply wall street, sorry, simply wallet, simply wall street, uh, touts it as being good because it's probably 60% below what the fair value is. So if you want to buy WWE stock, it'd be a good time to do it. Uh, They're forecasted to continue to grow. But on the downside, again, WWE has a high level of debt. And there's been significant insider selling over the last three months. So now, which also kind of makes me wonder, too, about the whole thing about people speculating that they're going to sell the company because if they're going to sell the company, you wouldn't be having a lot of insiders selling their stock. You'd want to get bought out. So, you know, you, if you if another company is coming in to buy you out, then you want more stock for them to have to pay you instead of less. So I don't know if the insider selling is uh, any indication that they're going to be um, selling the company anytime soon. Again, it's very complicated sometimes, but I would say that to sum it up, do I think the budgetary concerns are the reason why these wrestlers are getting released? I think it's a flimsy excuse, but I do think that WWE does 
they're on, they're, they're okay, but if something shifts, they could have some liquidity problems. They could have problems, and they they want to keep their ratios as far as the amount of money that the executives can have for themselves, because you know it's their company. Uh, if they have to fire a bunch of wrestlers to keep that margin so they can keep getting paid what they want to get paid, then that's what they're going to do because it's their company. If they feel they can survive with it, they're going to do that. That's the unfortunate thing uh, about when you have a company, as I always say, that their main concern is how much money that they are putting in their pockets and not the best show that they can put on for their audience. And that's just it. So there's a little bit more to this than, you know, just WWE. You know, they make all this money, blah, 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 blah. And it's ridiculous that they fire these people. It's it's not totally ridiculous, but it's kind of ridiculous. So, but again, I don't know. Because, you know, next month, who knows what will happen next year. I mean, interest rates could shoot up next year and they could be in some debt. They, they would have debt issues if the interest rates shot up pretty high. So we'll see. But uh, I want to know what you guys think about this. Let me know, all you MBAs out there. <laughs> Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. Um, yeah, and until next time, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe button, notification bell, and I'll see you guys for more news breaks here on the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. Have a good day.